Hi and welcome to another of our super informative videos. Moving to Italy, everything you need to know. We moved to Italy several years ago, have counseled dozens of others on their move, and we have carefully documented the visa and moving processes, which we share with you in this video. We provide a detailed outline of the steps you need to take, follow, and fulfill in order to move to Italy. Our video also includes many pro tips and helpful information that we have learned from firsthand experience. This video assumes you want to move to Italy and to live in Italy. Other than a strong 10 out of 10 recommendation for the stunningly beautiful, perfectly situated, UNESCO World Heritage Protected Region of Piedmont in Northern Italy, we don't discuss where you should live. Please know that all of the websites and links that we talk about in this video are available live in our ebook entitled, Move to Italy, The Definitive Guide. It's available on Amazon for only $9.99. If you want to move to Italy, it will be the best $9.99 you ever spend. And for those of you specifically looking for our complete guide to the Permesso di Soggiorno, check out our video, The Permesso di Soggiorno, Everything You Need to Know. For those of you who don't yet know about the Permesso di Soggiorno, we'll get to that in a few minutes. And one last quick note before we really get started. If you're interested in buying a house in Italy, check out our super informative video, Buying a House in Italy, on our House Finders Italy YouTube channel. You'll find the link in the description for this video. Our first topic of discussion and the first area you will need to tackle, visas and the Italian consulate. Because you cannot legally move to Italy without first obtaining a long-term visa from the Italian consulate office located in the country where you live. Most of the information I discuss in this video is helpful for anyone in any country who is thinking about or in the process of moving to Italy. However, my information on obtaining visas and the Italian consulate requirements applies only to American citizens. It may be very similar for citizens of other countries or very different, but for citizens of countries other than the U.S., you will have to go through the Italian consulate in your country. Americans and Canadians and citizens from many other non-EU countries can travel throughout Italy and the EU for any 90 days within any consecutive 180 days. Then they need to leave Italy and the EU for at least 90 consecutive days before returning. So in effect, you can be in Italy for up to 180 days or six months in a year. As an American citizen, if you want to stay longer than 90 days at a time, if you want to move to Italy, you must first apply for a long-term visa from the Italian consulate in the United States. The Italian consulate in the US, as in every other country, is an extension of the Italian government when you go to or deal with the Italian consulate, you are in effect dealing with Italy, with the rules, regulations, governances, and employees of the Italian government. There are several types of long-term visas, including study, military, and work visas. But for people who don't qualify for those visas, for most people who want to move to Italy, you will need to obtain an elective residence visa. To apply for an elective residence visa, you need to make an appointment to appear in person at the Italian consulate office that serves the state you live in. To find out which office serves your state, go to the Italian Embassy website. Go to Passports and Services, then Consulates in the U.S., search for your state, and click on that office. There are currently 10 Italian consulate offices serving the United States. You must have an address in the U.S. to apply. If you live in Nashville, you cannot apply at the consulate in Miami. They will check for proof of residency. In some, but I think very limited circumstances, some consulates allow you to submit your application in person at an honorary consulate office closer to where you live. You can see a link to the honorary office locations at the Italian Embassy website. Please note that each of the 10 Italian consulate offices have their own visa requirements and their own website structure. The steps that we outline are based on the Los Angeles Consulate website, and you may find differences with your consulate's requirements and website. Getting started on your move to Italy. The first thing you should do, after you've made the decision to move, is to obtain a Codice Fiscale. The Codice Fiscale is kind of like an Italian Social Security card, but a bit different in that it is used for so many things. And it's not quite as precious. If you lose it, it's easy to replace. When you're in Italy, you need to hand it out pretty regularly to give people copies for all kinds of reasons. Researching the Codice Fiscale online could make it seem like it's a very hard document to obtain, 
but it is not. The free, easiest, and fastest way to obtain it is through an Italian consulate office website. And you do not need to do this through the consulate office that serves your state. Some consulate offices require more documentation than others. Some even require a birth certificate. We like the Los Angeles Italian consulate website for obtaining a Codice Fiscale as it requires minimum documentation and you can do everything online. We advise doing this step first because not only will you need your Codice Fiscale to apply for your elective residence visa, you will also need it to secure a place of residence in Italy. And you need to secure a place of residence in Italy in order to apply for your elective residence visa. Yes, in order to apply for your visa, you must have secured a place to live in Italy when you arrive there, either a house that you own or are in the process of buying, or an executed long-term rental agreement. We'll discuss this in more detail later. Italian consulate requirements and required documents. Remember, you must apply for your elective residence visa through the Italian consulate office that serves your state. We are going to go to the Los Angeles Italian Consulate. On the horizontal blue bar at the top of the home page, click on the visas link. Each consulate site is a bit different from here, but find the link to the Italian elective residence visa. As you navigate, you can read about all of the different types of visas, but again, in order to move to and live in Italy, unless you are a student, military, or have already been hired by an Italian company, you will need the elective residence visa. Carefully read the elective residence visa requirements. Make sure you can fulfill all of them and that you can supply all of the requested information. If you submit insufficient or incomplete documentation to the consulate at your initial appointment, you will be asked to return under a new appointment. And as appointments can take up to six months to schedule, it will be a huge waste of your time. The two most important elective residence visa requirements which must be thoroughly substantiated are Important requirement number one, financial records proving that you are able to support yourself autonomously without the need of employment in Italy. You will need to show that you have a steady source of income and that source cannot be the job you currently have that you will quit when you move. For instance, if you are currently working as an accountant or a doctor or a teacher, you will obviously quit this job before moving to Italy. With an elective residence visa, you cannot get a job or be hired by an Italian or Italian company until five years after you move here. We'll discuss more about working in Italy right after this visa section. You can satisfy the steady income financial requirement by having retirement income, social security, pensions, trust funds, dividends, rental income, deferred income, etc and in many cases, self-employment. Most consulates do not give a specific dollar amount needed to meet this requirement for a steady source of income. Some give a U.S. dollar equivalent of approximately $3,000 per month per individual. We have not seen official consulate requirements listed for couples, but research and client experience indicates that married couples have to add an additional 20% to that number, plus an additional 5% per child. The financial income requirement for the elective residence visa is often the biggest hurdle for people wanting to move to Italy. My steady income was from a business I owned and continued to own after I moved to Italy. At the time of my application, I didn't have cash flow from retirement, trust funds, or rental properties, but by providing a proven and ongoing record of cash flow from business ownership, my visa application was approved. I have a friend who is a freelance travel writer. She lives in Italy and was able to get her visa by showing steady self-employment income as well as a modest nest egg. Another friend who does not have steady cash flow got his visa by proving a high net worth in real estate. So do not dismay. Pro tip, when you are assembling your documents for the financial requirements, make it very clear for the consulate official how you will be funding your life in Italy. Make it easy for them to figure things out. Important requirement number two. Proof of residence in Italy. It seems like a bit of a catch-22 situation, but when you apply for your elective residence visa, you must already have an address where you will live when you arrive in Italy. This can be a signed long-term rental agreement or real estate that you own or in the process of buying. This requirement obviously takes pre-planning. If you own a house, you will need to provide a copy of the deed with your name on it. 
If you are in the process of buying a house, you will need to provide a copy of the executed Italian language contract of sale between you and the seller. If you are renting, make sure the rental contract adheres to any requirements that may be stated on the consulate website. Your landlord should be the one to provide you with the correct Italian language rental agreement that they have registered with the Italian government. The consulates do not list living with a family member or friend as an option for the residency requirement, but from client experience they do allow it. In this case, secure a signed letter in Italian from the friend or family member you will be living with that details the arrangement. Include the property address, the host proof of ownership, as well as a copy of the host codice fiscale. Do not mention rent or other payments in the letter. Some consulates specifically state that a hotel or Airbnb booking, regardless of length, will not suffice for the proof of residency requirement. Other requirements for the elective residence visa vary from office to office. Some offices ask for proof of health insurance coverage, some do not. Some require FBI background checks, some do not. Some offices will be a tiny bit pliant on some of the requirements, some will not. For example, ownership of real estate in Italy is considered an advantage when applying for an elective residence visa, or a high net worth may negate the minimum income requirements. Once you are sure you can meet these two requirements, we suggest the following steps. Create a Move to Italy timeline calendar. The two most important dates you should think about first are your flight to Italy date and your consulate appointment date. These don't have to be firm. Play around with them to see what best suits your plans. Remember, many consulates have a two to six month waiting period for appointments. You need to have a flight booked in order to submit your application at your consulate appointment. Once you submit your application, it could take up to 90 days for the consulate to process it. If documents are incomplete, this could cause delays. You need to have a place of residence secured in order to submit your application. Put everything you need to do on that calendar. You might start with a perfect date to arrive in Italy and fill in backwards from there. If that perfect date is a year or more in the future, then this is not so difficult. If you want or need to move sooner, then the timeline can get quite tight. My visa process went very smoothly. In March, I went online and made my Los Angeles consulate appointment. The first appointment I could get was on June 25th. On June 25th, I went to my appointment. On July 9th, my visa was ready. And on July 27th, my flight left for Italy. But I would consider the two-week consulate turnaround from handing in my application to receipt of my visa stamp a very fast one. Before you start working on the visa requirements and supporting documentation, create an online account on your consulate website. You do this through the online appointments portal, the Prenota online link that is found on the visas page. Again, every consulate's website is a bit different, so it is not possible to say exactly where to find this. Look for an online appointments or prenota online link or menu. Even if you think you are not ready to make an appointment, create your account and go into and investigate the appointment section. Some consulate offices have three to six month waiting periods for appointments. So when you enroll, you can go online and see what their approximate waiting period is. If the waiting period is too long for you, you can go online every day at a certain time. For the LA office, it's 3 p.m and see if closer appointments become available due to cancellations. Also, at present, due to COVID, some of the consulate pre systems are offline. These consulate offices are only accepting appointment requests via email or by calling the office. The LA appointment system is offline, but the Boston system appears to be online. Book your consulate appointment. As nearly everything you do in the move process will be based on the date of your consulate appointment, and as that date will probably be three to six months in the future, it is best to make your appointment very early on. Book your flight to Italy. As we mentioned before, you need to include proof of your flight booking when you submit your visa application. While some offices don't give a time period for submission, some offices require that you submit your application at least three weeks, but not more than 90 days prior to your departure date. Obviously, if you have a flight booked sooner than 90 days, they will consider this in the processing time. Research the factors necessary for your move and incorporate them into your calendar. For example, you will be moving from where you live. This alone requires a lot of time, logistics, and date coordination. 
Home sale closings, which almost always take longer than anticipated. Rental of property, final notices, utilities, downsizing, packing, shipment of possessions, movers, freight companies, etc. Do you need to rent a car for when you arrive in Italy? Car rental availability can get tight in the summer months, and since you don't have to pay up front, there's no risk of reserving early. Make sure to rent a car big enough for everything you are taking on the flight. People, luggage, animals, animal cages. Will you be moving your possessions? We sent ours by container boat and they arrived about two months after we did. Will you be moving with animals? Like everywhere, Italy has strict rules and a lot of time-sensitive documentation to complete when you bring animals into the country. Also, most flights have limited animal slots. More reason to book your flight early. I discuss shipment of possessions and shipment of pets in detail a bit later in the video. Super uber important. Renew all of the personal documents that you are able to renew while you are still in the U.S. These include, most importantly, your U.S. driver's license. In my opinion, you will want to have a U.S. driver's license that is valid for at least four years after you move. You will need it to drive and to rent cars. You are technically required to obtain an Italian driver's license within two years of moving. But the written test is in Italian and it is difficult to pass, especially if you are not fluent by that time. It is not easy to renew your U.S. driver's license while you're in Italy. Many motor vehicle websites in the U.S. do not allow online access from outside of the U.S., even through a VPN. So when you're in Italy, you cannot renew online unless you have someone in the U.S. who can do it online for you. And the renewed license will most likely be mailed to the address on the license where you don't live anymore. Some DMV offices will mail a license to a U.S. address other than the one on the license. So you could ask for it to be mailed to a friend who then forwards it on to you. If your U.S. license expires sooner than four years after your move, you may want to consider calling it lost and getting a new one. You will thank us for this advice. U.S. Passport. You can only renew this if it expires in one year or less. But when you're in Italy, you can renew your U.S. passport through any U.S. embassy or consular office there. Global entry card, if applicable. Credit cards. Many credit card companies will not renew your card when you change your address to Italy. Print out the application for the elective residence visa. Begin filling it out and collecting, copying, and assembling the required documentation. Do not wait until the last minute or the last few days before your appointment. There is a lot of paperwork required. Some of it takes time to gather and some documents need to be notarized. Get all of your paperwork perfectly in order according to the requirements listed on the application and on the consulate website. Check and double check your documents against the requirements. We cannot stress enough the importance of having the application and accompanying documents perfectly complete and in order when you submit them. Make it super easy for the consulate official to go through and understand your documents, especially the documentation demonstrating your financial means. Prepare summary spreadsheets if necessary or helpful. Do a cover letter referencing your name, passport information, date of departure for Italy, and Codice Fiscale number. Summarize in the body your address in Italy, your health insurance coverage if required, and your financial resources. I would say that more than half of the people in front of me at my consulate appointment were turned away for insufficient paperwork. If you do not have the correct paperwork at your first appointment, it could mean a three-month delay or more in your plans. Before you go to the appointment, gather the following. 20 passport size photos. You will need them for your visa application and for many, many other things once you get to Italy. A copy of your previous three years tax returns. This may not be listed as a document requirement on your consulate website, but they often ask for this when you submit your application, especially if you're self-employed. Make three copies of all of the documents that you submit with your visa application. Passports, bank statements, everything. Keep one copy to give to the consulate, one copy to keep for your records, and one copy for future use in Italy. A cashier's check or money order, or whatever method is required by your consulate office, to pay the visa fee. Make sure it is made out to the appropriate entity. The fee amount will be somewhere within the visa instructions on the consulate website. The consulate offices do not accept cash. Go to your visa appointment where you will submit your paperwork and answer simple questions. Be on time. Be friendly, practice saying buongiorno. 
I can almost guarantee if the first thing you do when you approach the window is smile and say buongiorno with a half decent pronunciation, you'll be halfway to getting your visa. If your paperwork is complete and easy to navigate, you're a 75% there. If you have managed to meet the financial requirements, you will be 99.99% on your way to getting your elective residence visa. If the consulate official asks you to provide additional documentation that is not listed on the consulate requirements, you will not have to make a new appointment. You can return at any time to hand in the documents, or the official may provide you with an email address to submit the info. If your paperwork is rejected as incomplete or insufficient, you may have to make another appointment to come back with the corrected paperwork. Please note, you will have to submit your passport to the Italian consulate at your appointment. The consulate will keep your passport while they review your application, and they will return it when they have accepted or rejected your request. This review could take up to 90 days, but it is usually faster. So don't make any plans like I did to go out of the country during this period. Pro tip. At your initial appointment, the consulate may ask if you would like to pick up your documents in person or if you would like them mailed to you. Since they have your passport, we suggest retrieving them in person. The last thing you want is for these things to get lost in the mail. If your application is accepted, the consulate will affix the visa stamp to your passport and you are ready to go. If rejected, you may reapply according to the advice of the consulate. The elective residence visa grants you permission to remain in Italy for one year. It is an entrance and exit visa. It does not grant you permission to actually live in Italy. This is a very important distinction because in order to stay in Italy once you get there, you will need to obtain that holy grail of Italian residency, the Permesso di Soggiorno. The Permesso di Soggiorno is an entity onto its own, to which we provide a complete guide in our separate video, the Permesso di Soggiorno, everything you need to know. Working in Italy. As we mentioned before, once you get to Italy on an elective residence visa, in order to legally stay in Italy, you will need to obtain an elective residence permesso di soggiorno. Then, you must renew the permesso continuously for five years, then you can apply for permanent Italian residency. Not citizenship, which we will discuss a bit later. During this five-year period, you cannot get a job in Italy or be hired by an Italian employer or company. After five years, if you are granted permanent Italian residency, you can then be hired by an Italian employer or company. When you get to Italy, you can, however, be self-employed, own a business in the U.S., or have an internet business. And there are ways to set up your business structure to meet the requirements of both Italy and the U.S. But this is a case-by-case, in-depth discussion for an accountant, probably one who lives in Italy and specializes in expat taxes. Shipping household contents and belongings to Italy. Household goods can be imported duty-free up to six months after you move to Italy. An experienced or reliable shipping agent can simplify customs, customs clearance, and duty-free importation of household effects. Look for one that guarantees door-to-door -door service. The shipping company will pack for you if you choose, will load your belongings into a transport truck, store if needed, then transport to a shipping container at the appropriate port. There are several sizes of containers and you can often arrange for half a container if you can't fill a whole one. Before moving, we did a major call of our belongings and could have pared down even more. So think long and hard about what you would bring. It's not just the cost to bring it, but once you're in Italy, if you brought stuff you don't want, it's a bit of a pain to get rid of. Don't bring high wattage appliances from the United States, such as vacuum cleaners, blenders, food processors, power tools, basically anything with a motor. You might be able to use them with a special transformer for a little while, but the motor may burn out after a few months. We learned the hard way and burned out our food processor and Instant Pot. You can take electrics without a motor, such as phones, computers, printers, lights. These can be plugged in using an adapter like one of these. You might want to pick up a few of these before you leave, so that when you get to Italy, you can use your phone and computer, etc. right away, without having to run to the hardware store, which will probably be closed for lunch. Make sure you get the adapter for Italy. It looks like this, not like this. We ship the equivalent of two medium-sized apartments, four bedrooms in total. Our total shipping cost, door-to-door, -door, including customs clearance, was under $9,000. My kitchenwares alone cost more than that. I used to own a kitchen store, so for us it was well worth it. We lived in Long Beach, very close to the port of departure, so this kept costs down quite a bit. But our belongings landed in the port of Genoa, 
and it was a two-hour truck ride to our house. The shipping company unloaded the truck and brought our belongings into our house. It took about 60 days for our items to arrive at our door. The company that we used was ShippingMyGoods.com. They handled everything, and we were pleased with the results from start to finish. Shipment of motor vehicles. The U.S. Embassy in Rome states that a motor vehicle, if owned for more than a year, may be imported duty-free within six months of receiving a certificate of residence. Imported vehicles must be registered and Italian license plates obtained. However, this is much more easily said than done. We strongly advise against taking a car, motorcycle, scooter, or any motor vehicle from the U.S. to Italy. While they can be imported duty-free, registering non-EU vehicles in Italy is an expensive, time-consuming, and we would even say nearly impossible undertaking. It's much easier to sell them before you move and buy a new in Italy, where car prices, new and used, are very reasonable. Dog and cat relocation. Understandably, it's not a simple process to move your pets, and I'm talking dogs and cats, to Italy, as importing any animal poses risks to humans, animals, and vegetation. There are strict and time-sensitive requirements to follow from Italy, from the United States, as well as from the airlines. The requirements for bringing animals into Italy from the U.S., as stated on the U.S. Embassy in Rome website, are, for each pet, a European Community Veterinary Certificate, downloadable from the Embassy, a valid veterinary certificate stating owner's details, a description of the animal, details of identification, and vaccination, a valid rabies vaccine and certificate, if the rabies vaccine was the animal's first vaccine, then it must wait 21 days before entering the country. A tattoo or a microchip compatible with current ISO standards. The cage or carrier must be labeled with the owner's name, address, and contact numbers in Italy. The animal must be over three months old. One potential trip up is the tattoo or microchip that needs to be compatible with current ISO standards. We chipped our animals when we got them about 12 years before moving to Italy and found out very close to our move date that their chips were not ISO compatible. We had to get all of them rechipped. The United States also has requirements to take animals out of the country. You need to obtain a time sensitive U.S. Department of Agriculture certificate for each pet. You can find more about this at the USDA website. It's also very important to understand the requirements of your airline for traveling with animals, and each airline has its own set of rules. Many flights have limited animal slots, whether in the cabin or in the hold, which is more reason to book your flight early. Most airlines require very specific transportation cages with water dishes, live animal stickers, and secure but accessible gate closures. Our airline, Swiss Air, allowed dogs and cats under 20 pounds to ride in the cabin with the owner, and each owner could take two animals. Dogs or cats in excess of 20 pounds had to travel in the animal hold in the cargo area. You have your Italian elective residence visa. You have a place to live, and you are on your way to Italy. Now, there are several very important things you need to do as soon as you get to Italy in order to stay and live in Italy. You will need to get official documentation showing you are now a resident of Italy. You will use this documentation for many, many things, including the setup of utilities, bank accounts, etc. You get this documentation from the Comune that governs the city, town, or area where you live. The Comune is a municipal office with government employees who handle matters on a local level, including identity cards, planning permits, property taxes, trash pickup, etc. There is a comune in nearly every town, no matter how small, and there could be several branches in the larger cities. So on one of the first days after you arrive, go to your local comune armed with the following. Four passport size photos, your passport, your codice fiscale, proof of address, either the deed to your house or paper showing that you are in the process of buying a house, or your long-term rental agreement. Walk up to the window, smile and say buongiorno, and ask if anyone there speaks English. Parla inglese? If not, you'll need to put your communication skills to work. Take a phone or an Italian English dictionary. Introduce yourself as a new resident and ask to get the following two documents. Carta di identità. This card is just as it sounds. An identity card from your locality, the town, or city where you live. It is not an Italian government or immigration document. You will need this card for many things. Informativa dati anagrafici. 
This is a piece of paper, a certificate showing that you have a residence or address in the community. It's kind of an additional verification of residence from the community above and beyond the Carta de Identita. It will probably take a few days for the Comune to prepare your documents. They probably won't notify you when they are ready. You will probably need to stop by the office several times to check the status. These two documents show that you have a residence in the community. Now, you need to apply for and get this thing that I keep talking about, your Permesso di Soggiorno, permission to stay from the Italian government. Permesso di Soggiorno is granted by the Italian Immigration Office. It is predominant to your elective residence visa. Note the important distinction. The visa that you receive from the Italian consulate in the U.S. grants you entry to and exit from the European Union for up to one year. The Permesso di Soggiorno that you receive in Italy from the Italian Immigration Office grants you permission to stay or live in Italy beyond that year. Filling out the application for the Permesso di Soggiorno is not difficult. It's basically a form with questions and documentation that you already have. But the steps for finding, understanding, submitting, and paying for the application can be very logistically and emotionally challenging. The Permesso di Soggiorno is an entity unto itself, so much so that we have made a separate video, which you can find on our YouTube channel, titled The Permesso di Soggiorno, Everything You Need to Know. Italian Citizenship There are several ways to gain Italian citizenship, three of which we discuss here. Lineage If you are of Italian lineage, if your parent, grandfather, or great-grandfather is or was an Italian citizen, you may be able to claim Italian citizenship by descent. Italy allows dual citizenship with many countries, including the U.S., but there are restrictions. To find out more, a good starting resource is the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs website. If you are a non-Italian spouse, married to or in a civil union with an Italian citizen, and you reside in Italy, you can apply for Italian citizenship by marriage after two years of marriage or civil union. This term is reduced by half if the couple has children under 18. If you reside outside of Italy, you can apply after three years. Same-sex marriages are recognized as civil unions in Italy. Otherwise, you can attain an Italian citizenship through residence by living in the country continuously and legally for 10 years, five years with a continuous permesso di soggiorno, and then five years as a permanent resident. But you don't automatically become a citizen through residence after 10 years. Citizenship is granted by the state. The application process is quite involved and the applicant must pass an Italian language test at the B2 level. Since the European Union was established, citizens of all the member countries are afforded advantageous rights such as free movement, settlement, and employment across the EU. Persons with Italian citizenship enjoy the benefits of the ability to work and reside in Italy as well as in other EU countries, Germany, France, Spain, Sweden, etc., without the need for a visa. Access to medical benefits, including free health care. Access to educational benefits, including free higher education. Access to certain financial investment rights. The ability to transfer automatically the citizenship to all children under 18 years. Health care in Italy. What is health care like in Italy? It's one of the most frequently asked questions. Healthcare in Italy is nationalized and consistently ranks as one of the top healthcare systems in the world. It is governed by the National Health Service and run by the Servizio Sanitario Nazionale on the local level. It includes both public and private care providers. Most citizens of Italy get free general health care through the National Health Service. A citizen can also and at any time choose a private doctor or service that they would pay for directly. A resident of Italy Someone who has been granted permesso di soggiorno or permanent residency can roll in the national system or use private providers. For residents, there is an annual fee to enroll in the national system, which is based on income. I don't know anyone who pays more than $350 per month for the National Health Care Service. There are also a myriad of agencies offering private health insurance to expats in Italy. These companies are easy to find, research, and compare online. Many expats choose to buy a private coverage policy before they move and to keep that policy after they move, either forever or until they can get into the national health care system and feel comfortable with the coverage the system offers. And remember, some Italian consulate offices in the U.S. require that you have health insurance coverage for Italy in order to apply for your elective residence visa. 
An important thing to know is that in Italy, if you are a resident, any medical care that is deemed emergency or zona rosa, red zone, is done without hesitation and without charge. This includes instances where you have to go to the hospital or are taken by an ambulance. If the physicians categorize your situation as zona rosa, there is no charge for anything. If you go to or are taken to the hospital and your situation is categorized as zona gialla or zona bianca, yellow or white, then you would be responsible for paying for a portion or all of the treatment. Buying, registering, owning, and insuring a car in Italy. Buying a car in Italy is a fairly straightforward process. The seller holds the paper title, called the libretto. When there is a sale, both the seller and the buyer need to go to a local official automobile registration office to register the sale and transfer the title. The process is simple paperwork and usually takes no more than 30 minutes. The documents needed are title of the car, carta di identità, codice fiscale, permesso di soggiorno, proof of insurance, and a passport. You have to have your permesso di soggiorno to buy a car in Italy or permanent residency or citizenship. At the automobile office, you will sign a few pieces of paper and pay the registration fee. You can pay with a bank debit card and many offices also accept credit cards. The fee is not based on the value of the car or the sale price, but is based mainly on the horsepower of the engine. Most fees range between 300 and 1,000 euros. For the buyer, especially if you are not yet fluent in Italian, it's very helpful if you can go to the office with the seller. It's the best way to make sure that the yearly car taxes due are up to date, that all of the paperwork gets completed, and that you walk out of the office on your first visit with the libretto now in your name. Always keep your libretto and the receipts for fees paid in your car. There are also private companies that will do the paperwork and fulfill the necessary requirements. If you buy from a dealer, they should be able to do the transfer as well. Insurance for your Italian car. You must have liability car insurance in Italy. You do not have to have collision insurance. But you can't get car insurance from an Italian company until you have an Italian driver's license. So when you first arrive, as you will probably not have an Italian driver's license, you will need to find a company offering expat car insurance. There are many such companies online and they are easy to research and compare. When we first moved here, we used Clements Worldwide for car insurance. They were fast, English speaking, and reasonably priced. We always choose the roadside assistance coverage with our insurance policy. Ask your agent if it is available, what it covers, and what countries it covers. This is actually one of our main considerations when choosing a policy. When you are buying a car, contact your agent before you register the car and ask them about coverage. Most agencies will want a copy of the revised libretto in order to issue the actual policy, but they can tell you the conditions under which the car will be covered until you can furnish them with the libretto. If you don't have insurance, you need to get it. It's a major violation in Italy to drive without insurance, one you could spend a few days in jail over. Yearly car tax. In Italy, a yearly car tax must be paid on every car, whether it's being used or not. The amount of the tax is based on the EU emission grades, type of fuel, and horsepower. If you are stopped by the police, failure to produce a valid receipt of car tax payment may result in a fine. Payments can be made at your local automobile club office, at many bars, tabakis, banks, or post offices. Auto revisione. In Italy, it is a legal requirement for all cars that are more than four years old to have a revisione. It's performed on a car every two years. This is the equivalent to a car inspection in the U.S. Again, keep any receipts or documents from the revisione in your car at all times. If stopped by the police and it's found to be out of date, you will incur a fine. Getting an Italian driver's license. By law, Foreign residents in Italy must obtain an Italian driver's license within two years of moving to Italy. Until then, you can legally drive with a driver's license from your country. Getting an Italian driver's license is not such a straightforward process, as U.S. citizens must take both the written and the driving exam. Both exams are in Italian, so it is imperative that you have a good command of the language when you take them. You will also need to have a physical exam by a doctor indicating that you're able to drive a car. There are a lot of driving schools in Italy that can help in the process. They prepare you for both exams and arrange for the doctor appointment. Schools are not inexpensive, often costing 800 euros or more. And if you already know how to drive a car, much of the expense in schooling doesn't seem necessary. 
The Italian driver's license is valid for 10 years up to the age of 50. After that, it must be renewed every five years, and after age 70, every three years. Italian phones and phone numbers. It is very important that you obtain an Italian phone number right when you get to Italy. You will need to provide this number for all of your residence requirements to open or transfer utilities accounts, to open bank accounts, etc. If you don't want to give up your U.S. phone number, you can port your number to Google Voice. There is a one-time charge of about $20, and you can keep your number for your lifetime. There are several Italian phone companies to choose from, and like in the U.S., they all have fans and detractors. You can get phone service and phones at company stores that are located in small to large cities. You can also get service and phones at department-type stores such as Media World or Uni Aero, where they offer and you can compare service with the different companies. Phone plans are relatively inexpensive. Mine is 19 euros a month for as much data as I can use. This is compared to the $99 a month I was paying in the U.S. for the same service. Banking, credit cards, and currency exchange. Banks and bank accounts. You can probably survive for a little while living in Italy without an Italian bank account. One of the main reasons you need an Italian bank account is to pay your utilities. It is not possible to pay utilities from a non-Italian account or by a credit card. We suggest opening an account in a branch near where you live. Going to the bank in Italy is akin to going to the DMV in the United States. It is a time-consuming and sometimes fruitless process. The computers are down, the right person is not available. I use UniCredit, which does have very good online access and phone app banking. If you are a resident of Italy, meaning you have your permesso di soggiorno, make sure the bank knows this so they set you up with a resident account. If you are not yet a resident, they will have to set you up with a non-resident account, which has higher monthly or quarterly fees. When you open a bank account in Italy, the bank will provide you with a debit card, and you can also apply for a credit card through them. Your U.S. credit cards will work at some places and won't work at others, and we have found no consistent reasons why. If you want to have credit cards in addition to the one from your Italian bank, you can obtain international credit cards from banks such as Chase and Capital One. Pro tip, U.S. credit cards often do not work at gas stations, especially gas stations that are not on the autostratas. So when you first get to Italy and you don't have an Italian bank account and an Italian debit card, always carry cash when you're driving. Also, when you put cash in a machine at the gas station, you won't get change back. You may, if the printer is working, get a receipt which shows you have a credit to use at that station in the future. Currency exchange. As you will probably not be earning euros, at least not for a while after you move, you will have to transfer U.S. dollars to your Italian bank account to fund living expenses. And you don't want to keep withdrawing small amounts at a time using your U.S. bank card because the fees will really start to add up, and you can get better exchange rates by using a currency exchange service. Nor do you want to transfer all of your money to Italy in one lump sum, because transfers under $10,000 don't raise red flags. And you want to hedge on the fluctuations in currency rates. Since we moved to Italy, the exchange rate has fluctuated from $1.12 to $1.3 to the euro. If you're exchanging $10,000, a favorable exchange rate could mean a few hundred dollars difference in your favor. There are many currency exchange companies that are easily researched and compared online. We highly recommend XE.com for sending money from the states as we find they give the most competitive exchange rates. Once you have an account set up with them, it's very easy to exchange and transfer monies and it can easily be done within 24 hours. We do not recommend exchanging dollars through your bank in the U.S. or in Italy. These institutions often charge fees that add five basis points or more to the exchange rate. Pro tips on banking and exchange rates. Tell your U.S. visitors to leave their U.S. dollars at home. There are zero places you can use them in Italy and very few places where you can exchange them. And those places will give unfavorable rates. Gone are the days when you can walk into any bank and exchange money. Instead of hitting the currency exchange window when you arrive at the airport, find an ATM. ATM withdrawal is the best way to get cash, euros, in Italy as it will always save money over exchanging the actual dollars. And when you can, do charge things to a credit card, as you will get very favorable exchange rates from your credit card company. Learning Italian. Of course, everyone has their own method of learning, certainly when it comes to learning languages. But I share here what I have found to be the most effective for me. If you are an absolute beginner, our advice is not to take a language class right away. When you don't know anything about a language, and your teacher is throwing out new things every time you meet, it can be very overwhelming 
and frustrating and uninspiring. In fact, we would advise not to take a language class here in Italy until you have a good understanding of everyday words and phrases and basic verb tenses. This does require self-study. One of my favorite self-study resources is Pablo Polyglot's 600 Italian Phrases on YouTube. Listen over and over again to the video. Don't try and understand too much at first. Just listen, then start to repeat what he says out loud. Repeat it many times over and over. Get your mouth working the right way with the words and the accents. The muscles in your mouth have memory, and if you repeat grazie 20 times correctly, your muscles will start remembering how to say it. After you can repeat the words and phrases with the correct enunciation, then start to learn the meanings. Once you're a little bit more comfortable repeating basic words and phrases, learn your verbs. Study them constantly because they are very complicated, but they're the building blocks of sentences, and once you start learning your verbs, you will feel much more confident talking to people. Go slowly, at your own pace. It will come. Study. Write things down in a notebook. Write out the most common verb tenses, especially the irregular verbs. When you write things down, you tend to remember them more. <laughs> Once you feel comfortable saying basic words and phrases, conversing with the server at the coffee shop, with the people at the grocery store, that's a good time then to take some lessons. Renting a house in Italy. Long-term rentals are generally not difficult to find, especially in non-tourist areas. Expect to pay less than in the United States and other EU countries, sometimes much less. In Piedmont, outside of the large cities, you can rent a decent house or apartment starting at 300 euros a month. Buying a house in Italy. If you want to buy a house in Italy, the great news is, outside of the cities and famous tourist spots, houses are insanely affordable. We bought a 6,000 square foot country house here in Piedmont with eight acres of land for just under 200,000 US dollars. It needed cosmetic work, but it's completely sound and is absolutely stunning. It has several wells with potable water that will last five lifetimes. The house came with the furniture, including many beautiful handmade pieces of solid walnut, chestnut, and oak hardwoods. As it is our primary residence, there are no property taxes on the house ever. We offer house finding services in the dazzling region of Piedmont in northern Italy. Because buying a house in Italy is relatively easy, but finding a house in Italy can be a very difficult and involved process. You can find much more information on our house finder services at our website www.housefindersnorthernitaly.com. Grazie and arrivederci.